Hi, I'm Matt Needham, and this is my lecture on electrical safety, uh, chapter one from the textbook for refrigeration, heating, and air conditioning. Uh, so let's begin here at the first PowerPoint slide on the um, introduction. Now, safety is one of the most important things because if you don't have safety, you don't have your health, you don't have uh, really anything. So you're really in charge of your safety. You may have a company, they may have a safety program, but the truth is, unless you really work for a relative or somebody, nobody really, really cares that much about your safety except yourself. So you have to be in charge of your own safety. And first on electrical safety, let me say this. Don't be scared of electricity. Electricity is a lot like fire in that you cook on the stove, you turn on the burner to make your coffee or tea or what have you, and you're not scared of that, it's a useful tool. Likewise, electricity is a very useful tool, and by using safety practices, we can have confidence to work around even live electricity the same way we use an open flame on a stove. So here, the two types of injuries that can occur, or accidents for a person, would be um, burns, electricity coming into your body, and then electricity can also flow out of your body once it comes in and you get burned badly. And also we know that electricity can stop your heart. We know that your brain, through chemical means, produces electricity and it causes our heart to beat. And when a person's electrical signal is a little bit off, they use a pacemaker. And if they get an electrical shock, it can mess up the electrical signal, and then we have to, the paddle's clear, and shock them back to life, essentially. So those are the two safety hazards we have to be careful of, the heart and burns. But then also, electricity can cause fires, which can cause um, a lot of property damage and, and whatnot. So it's important that we have good practices so that we don't uh, endanger people or property. Um, it only takes a little bit of electricity to shock you and not even that much more to kill you, so we really have to do uh, we really have to be careful, okay, and not become part of an electrical circuit. Now, electromotive force is another way of saying the word voltage or electrical pressure that's available. In general, the higher the voltage, the more pressure of electricity you have and the more dangerous it is. It's not that dangerous to work around 24 volts alternating current, but 460 volts alternating current uh, you can get a lot more amperage pushed into you, so you have to be careful with these higher um, voltages and make sure that our body does not become a path to ground or to another conductor, which can allow electricity um, to flow. Here, this uh, individual um, is touching a piece of equipment. He's touching a furnace that wasn't grounded, and... Um, he became the path to ground. Now, normally when we have a, an electrical outlet, we have the ground prong, and I'm going to say something you may not have heard before, is that little ground that goes back to ground is to promote, to promote an uncontrolled flow of electricity so that so much electricity flows to the ground that we trip the circuit breaker, killing the circuit, instead of killing this guy right here because this equipment isn't grounded, so a wire came loose, a winding came loose in the equipment, touched the frame of the unit, and then when he touches it, he becomes electrified and he becomes the path to ground and it's passing through um, his heart at this point. So we want to make sure that we have good grounds, that our equipment has a path to earth ground, so literally the extra electrons can neutralize with the planet. This has happened to me. <laughs> um, going from hot to neutral with your hand um, and the electricity is going to take this least this this path and you'll get a bad shock in your hand your hand my hand became numb for a, a while an hour or so um, uh, and so you have to be very careful about this it's not just passing through your heart to your feet but you can pass it from one hand to another which could go through your heart which is a really bad scenario but even this can give you a bad shock so um, we have to be careful. Here, um, using gloves would have been um, a way to help prevent electrical shock when working around live circuits. And here, this guy is um, getting shocked through the heart from L1 to L2. He got hung up on two uh, live uh, electrical conductors, and this is really the worst case scenario for electric shock. 
even a tiny amount of amperage here, 15 um, one thousandths of an amp is enough to kill you. Um, so once you get it into your body, and you have to also be careful, there's not a lot written on this, but I always talk about if you have an open cut or an open wound, um, that even then, if you happen to touch anything live electrical, your chances of dying would be um, much greater. Again, don't be scared. Um, I, uh, I've been shocked many times, and maybe uh, uh, I'd be in better shape if I hadn't. Now, with a shock victim, you have to be careful that if they're hung up on a live circuit, that you don't grab them, because then you can become part of the live circuit. So you want to be able to knock them away with a something is non-conductive or really if you the fast best thing to do is if you can throw a disconnect or something like that and shut the power off um, that's your best case um, scenario okay also if somebody does get shocked or they get burned electrical burns leave their clothing intact don't try and take it off because uh, it may look bad it may be melted but you certainly don't want to peel their skin off with that you want to leave that for the burn unit now, the National Electric Code regulates safety, like wire sizes, fuse sizes, things of this nature, and they set down the regulations for uh, not just your safe practices, but all of these built-in electrical safeties that we have in modern society to prevent electrical shock, to prevent fires, and things of this nature. Now, again, we want our equipment to be grounded, we want our power tools uh, to be grounded unless they're double insulated in case double in plastic um, and this will allow uh, an uncontrolled flow of electricity to go back to ground instead of you becoming the conductor. Now here we have GFCI ground fault circuit interrupter and here I've drawn one here with the, um, the reset and the test buttons and how a ground fault circuit interrupter works is this is usually when we have it around water because water itself pure water doesn't conduct electricity but the minerals that are in the water which are always present does so we have to be very careful with electricity around water because that water with the minerals in it can create a path um, that can shock you. So here if we plugged in a dryer and I plugged in a dryer, let's say I'm going to blow dry my beautiful thick lush flowing hair as I do in the morning, um, then uh, I'd want to make sure that I have it in a ground fault circuit interrupter. Um, and what, how this works is it looks at the amount of electricity that comes out of the hot and then comes back to the neutral and if there's a difference, it trips off. So if you had three and a half amps going out for your hair dryer, and then you had 3.4 coming back, where did that tenth of an amp go? Well, it may be leaking out into some water that's nearby, so then it trips. And we know these are very sensitive, that a lot of times if you even turn uh, a hair dryer on or a vacuum cleaner or unplug it, it trips and then you have to reset it, because they're very sensitive to look at those uh, differences of amperage going out and amperage coming back. Also, we use fuses in the air conditioning refrigeration industry. We should use dual element or time delay fuses and circuit breakers, um, which uh, when you have an excess amount of current, um, it's going to trip it off before the wire would burn in half, again, protecting against fire. On the end switch of your circuit breaker, the little numbers that's stamped there, that's the maximum amperage that the breaker can handle over a couple of seconds, um, the full load amps, uh, where it will trip. This is lockout tag out. Here's a lockout tag right here. And it opens up and closes on the hasp and then you can put your lock in here so you can throw a disconnect you can shut off a big power supply and then put your lock on there so nobody can come and turn it on and shock you when you're working a few feet away on live electric uh, on the electrical um, so then you have to take your lock off and it's here for safety that when you shut something off you can not only tag it but also lock it out with our lockout tag out tag
Um, you want to keep your away uh, your body away from damp environments. I remember one time I was working on this pressure washing this giant 60 70 ton package unit and it was early in the morning I was working on a flat roof and I just it was like 5 a.m. and I want to take a little break and I put my hand right up against the side of the unit and I felt like I got shocked and I thought I understand the principles of electricity I couldn't have gotten shocked so what do you think I did again I touched the unit big idiot got shocked again so what happened was I was standing in a puddle of water and where the pressure sprayer was plugged into the extension cord, it was sitting in water and it conducted the current up into my body. And then when I touched the ground, it had the path to ground. So we want to be careful about things like that, standing in water, because we can get shocked. Okay. Um, Again, don't wear jewelry, don't wear too much bling when you're working around a circuit. Some people say, well, I have to have my wedding ring on all the time. Um, you may put it in your pocket and then put it back on, but maybe you just want to wear safety gloves um, because they will prevent electrical shock when you work around live electrical circuits. Sometimes it's necessary to work around live electrical circuits to troubleshoot to figure out what's wrong with the equipment, but if at all possible, Always shut the power off if you can. If you found the problem, you're working on something, replacing it, absolutely make sure you shut the power off and locked and tagged it out. Okay. Um, again, most shoes uh, are rubber soled. You want to make sure that uh, you do have rubber soles, just like the Beatles album. Uh, don't use metal ladders. Um, because again, metal ladders can conduct electricity. Uh, use wood or fiberglass ladders, okay? Make sure extension cords are not frayed or plugs are not frayed because, you know, you're not always paying attention to things like that and that can uh, shock you, um, could even start a fire, okay? Also, I'm a big fan of when electrical loads are running, whether it's a refrigerator or a window unit or anything that's plugged in, feel your, uh, your plug and see is it hot if it's hot you have a dirty or loose connection something needs to be replaced um, so uh, be careful of that now capacitors they take a charge and give a boost and they hold that little boost for a while after equipment is shut off so even if you throw the disconnect things like this run capacitor or start capacitor can hold um, a charge for a while and if even though the power's off if you touch them you could get shocked so we want to discharge the capacitors now this start capacitor has a built-in bleed resistor that will allow the electrons to equalize over time the run capacitor doesn't so it's recommended that we use a 20,000 uh, ohm or 4 watt resistor something similar to allow the uh, electrons to equalize. If the unit's been off for like an hour or something, it's not, or more, it's not gonna be an issue for you of really getting shocked, but uh, certainly anything less than that, uh, you, you could get shocked. So we wanna be careful of capacitors even when the power is off. Um, We, all, we want to use tools with insulated handles, so even if everything goes wrong and our tool touches a live circuit, and sometimes that may happen, uh, at least we have plastic or rubber on the handle so we wouldn't get shocked. And you want to inspect those tools because sometimes we fall in love with our old tools and we use them to death and the end gets frayed and now you're touching metal. Most of it's covered in rubber or plastic, but that electricity goes right through the center of the metal to the end piece. It's missing a little bit, so you want to be careful of that. And that concludes the lecture on safety.